one may develop into another uh, severe weather maker and it may actually, believe it or not, bring more snow into the forecast a little later in the period. Let's start off with highs this afternoon. The East Coast still looks pretty good. We have the south winds blowing. Most areas have cloud cover and actually a lot of rain through here, although you may see temperatures getting into the 70s, but uh, then the 30s sweep in behind it and then we'll set up for a fairly cool weekend in the east with the exception of South Florida still hanging on to the 80s. Nice warm up in Texas as these storms move out. Yesterday in Louisiana, uh, many locations held on in the 50s, so it looks pretty good here as we move into the weekend. Sunshine back in in the 70s and the 80s building here. Southwest okay. And northwest temperatures cool a little bit as our storm system comes in, 40s and 50s. Watch out temperatures are cut back by some 20 degrees on Monday as the storm system comes in and the 30s in there. So as I mentioned, possibility of more snow in the forecast. Uh, about the same spots, Minnesota, maybe down into the Plains, Michigan and Wisconsin may see a little bit of snow as the 30s come right back in on Wednesday. This one will not cool the southeast off quite as much as the now tax day is behind us, Easter behind us, we should be thinking about springtime, but in some locations they're still talking about winter. As a matter of fact, look at this. Just in about the past oh, 24 hours or so, Sawyer Air Force Base in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan has gotten 23 inches of snow. Marquette, Michigan, a nice stiff north wind helping them out as the winds come over the water and they're picking up thir they picked up 13 inches. Still snowing pretty heavily there. You go down to Sault Ste. Marie, 4 inches, Rochester, Minnesota, not as bad, but probably not exactly what you pick at this time of year weather-wise. Three inches of snow. Take a look at our current map, or uh, actually satellite picture in motion, and we'll show you the storm system is bringing the snow. On the back side of it, cold air rushing down out of Canada. It's not only cold and snowy, but it's windy out there, so that's given us wind chills in the teens and 20s in some locations, even single digits yesterday afternoon. So very cold through here. Chicago, no snow as of yet, but you're likely to see some, and they may get some snow in Indianapolis and Cleveland and Detroit as well over the weekend, but no big accumulations through there. It's actually cool all the way down to the south, but they do have sunshine, and temperatures should be warming into the 70s in Louisiana, getting a little better across the southeast. Looks like a pretty nice weekend shaping up. Meanwhile, on the front side of the storm system, right along the cold front, you can see the puffy clouds here indicating where the thunderstorms are, and they're still fairly potent, very heavy rain. We've had some reports of flooding, and there's likely to be a little bit more here with all of this uh, heavy rain coming in and it may last through much of the afternoon. Temperatures in the 60s here, 71 in Charleston, not bad, only 52 in Atlanta, a little cool. Should gradually warm up through the weekend, uh, but nothing compared to what they have up we're in the snow zone. 33 in Green Bay, 38 in Chicago with a wind chill feels I believe like 21 is the wind chill, not too nice. Southwest in full sunshine, no big changes over the weekend while the northwest they do have a few clouds coming in. The rain is not here as of yet, but they are expecting and it may uh, come as far south as San Francisco. Right now, it's just overcast and 58. Zoom in on the east shows you exactly where our cold front sits here. Strong south winds and the rain and thunderstorms have been traveling almost directly northward, a little bit east of north. And then here's your snow from around Green Bay, just west of Chicago, down to St. Louis where they have a rain and snow mix. There's also, of course, the possibility of severe weather. Now, here's the area outlined today with the darker shading of red. We've had severe weather for the past several days and already this morning in western Pennsylvania they've had a lot of wind and hail damage. Severe storms have worked a little bit further to the east and there is a severe thunderstorm watch in effect until 2 o'clock this afternoon, so for another half hour. A little bit further to the south, tornado watch in effect until 7 o'clock this evening as the front pulls very slowly out. We're likely to see several more hours of stormy weather. Take a look at it right now. You can see the rain uh, in central well, I make that eastern North Carolina, not quite to Elizabeth City as of yet, and uh, Norfolk as well as Virginia Beach expect to see some rain and thunderstorms. Up around Charlottesville, you're on the western extent of the rain, so maybe a little better by later this afternoon. Storms in D.C. and Baltimore up towards Hagerstown reporting thunderstorms. Big clusters of storms right through here. It becomes lighter rain but still enough so enough rain cause, to cause some flooding problems in this area. And up to Syracuse, it is warm enough so it is all rain this go around, but a pretty stormy and a wet day ahead. And on the back side, we still have a lot of low clouds and some lighter rain in Ohio and Indiana down to Tennessee with a small area of snow. It's pretty persistent. We also have a little bit of snow showing up in Colorado, not much showing up on radar, but it's out there. Aspen getting a little snow as this weak system pulls across, bringing most, mainly clouds with it with some light precipitation. And one more 
thunderstorm system on the west coast waiting to come in. You can see it's really wound up here on the Gulf of Alaska, pulling up into Canada. The clouds are already on shore, and they'll be expecting the rain, and some of it could be fairly heavy in the next 24 hours. So this is what we'll see. Our main storm system here pulling out, so today the last real stormy day should be actually fairly quiet through the weekend with basically a zonal flow on the jet stream. But the jet stream buckles on Monday as that next storm really starts the developing stages out here in the plains, and we're likely to see once again severe weather, and believe it or not, probably more snow in the forecast. A little late in the season for that, but still out there. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our forecast by Friday afternoon. Here it is. Our storm system quickly moving on out, however, for Saturday. A little blustery and cool here, but Sunday should be better. Southeast in the sunshine. This trough still working eastward. Maybe a few sprinkles with it, but not really a big deal. And our storm system in the northwest now ashore with the rain. Again, some of it could be fairly heavy, and we may find flooding problems here as well. And the rain may get down to about San Francisco by Saturday afternoon. Rain uh, mounting to perhaps a half inch northwest. Certainly the heaviest rain here in the northeast with those downpours. Many locations could see an inch, if not more. And while they've already got one to two feet of snow in some locations, could see another six to 12 inches. And the Great Lakes states with temperatures this afternoon only in the 30s. Doesn't look so great here. As a matter of fact, it will be a relatively cool weekend. Only in the 20s for Wisconsin and Minneapolis, probably in the 20s. Warming up pretty nicely on Sunday, but the temperatures dropping right back on Monday as that next storm starts to pull out into the plains, carrying with enough cold air a little bit of snow. Here's the starting stages on Sunday. It looks like rain, snow for the higher elevations, just windy in the southwest. Not really a big deal here. It quickly digs out into the plains, picking up more moisture, starting with some strong thunderstorms on Monday and a little bit of snow. And it looks like this one once again will be traveling east along the Gulf Coast. It's water. The Weather Channel forecast is also available from the following. Now, your local forecast, accurate and dependable from the Weather Channel. Watch the Climate Puzzle, Sunday, April 18th at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, here on the Weather Channel. If you're traveling through the Northeast today, you will find uh, not only the heavy rain, but possibly some flooding. We've already had numerous reports of flash flooding anywhere from New York and on down into Virginia. And flash flood watches are out for all these areas shaded in the darker green. So some pretty heavy thunderstorms through here. Lighter rain extending back into Illinois and some rain coming into the Northwest coastline. Not here as of yet, but they are expecting some rain. Some of it could be fairly heavy and they could actually see a few flooding problems through here as well. In addition to that, of course, the threat of severe weather again this afternoon, a little bit further to the north and east than it was yesterday, and there are some watches out. This one about to expire in just about five minutes, so we take you a little further to the south and west. Tornado watch in effect until 7 o'clock this evening, and we do have some pretty strong storms in line here radar out of here coming up at the top of the hour. What about snow? Well, believe it or not, it's still out there. Snow from upper peninsula of Michigan, as much as two feet on the ground right now, and still snowing heavily around Sawyer Air Force Base. A few inches possible from Wyoming and Colorado, and as the rain comes into the northwest and the higher elevations, they're likely to see some snow. Unfortunately, it doesn't look much better. As a matter of fact, it's going to be pretty cold up here. We may see a little bit of snow. Winds will be coming down out of the north to northwest as our storm system starts to pull off to the north and east. So it'll still be fairly blustery here, and probably an onshore breeze initially on the coast of Maine. Winds over 25 miles per hour, and so a lot of cloud cover around. However, across your fingers, looks like there's a chance at least that you'll see more sunshine by afternoon from, say, New York City to Philadelphia and Washington, D.C., and the clouds are breaking up in the western Great Lakes. Further to the south, sunshine for Saturday. Saturday. Temperatures will be a little below normal through most of the southeast. Florida should be okay with warm temperatures and warm water temperatures and winds much lighter on Saturday. So looking up here, Sunday probably warmer yet. Looks pretty good. Winds only 5 to 15 miles per hour. Now on the west coast, we have a new storm system pulling ashore. We already have the cloud cover. Quileute has a little rain, but it does look like we'll have some stronger winds tomorrow. Gusts over 25 miles per hour and then a lot of cloud cover with the rain expanding to at least coastal Washington and Oregon, perhaps as far south as San Francisco. South of there breaks out into full sunshine. Soon on the Weather Channel. Now, your local forecast, accurate and dependable from the Weather Channel.
can check the weather for the next five days, and we see one major storm system that's been a real troublemaker for the past few days on the way out in time for the weekend. And we'll leave a few leftover showers, and believe it or not, snow showers for Saturday. And then we have some snow right at the moment, two feet on the ground now in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, and it's still snowing, however, not as heavily as it was just a few hours ago. Snow extending down into Illinois, Decatur reporting some snow, Springfield a little snow, and then rain down around Carbondale and into parts of Kentucky and Tennessee. It's mainly just scattered light rain a little drizzle into Ohio. Out ahead of the front, we still have the strong to severe thunderstorms, and that will be going around through, on through most of the afternoon. Tomorrow, the front just about pulls offshore. The low works up into Canada, and things should gradually start to calm down a little bit here. The next system coming along doesn't uh, pose much of a problem, carrying with it a few clouds. We've had a couple reports of light snow through Colorado and Wyoming, and it looks like tomorrow in the plains, there may be a couple of showers, possibly even a couple of afternoon thunderstorms, but this one should not be a real big deal. The next one coming along, on the other hand, is going to look much like the first one that's now moving out. Comes into the northwest, some fairly heavy rain expected, possibly some flooding problems and more snow for the higher elevations, and we'll see this one coming across the country in the next several days. We'll get to that in just a moment. Let's talk about temperatures. Saturday morning and mid-April, this is a little cold, 20s and 30s all the way down to the Gulf Coast. And if you have plants outside, you may want to bring those, and it's going to be a little chilly out there. The east coast, so with the south winds and the cloud cover, so it may be fairly mild overnight, but a cool weekend setting up here, and it looks like a little area of 50s. Uh, sandwiched in there with some 60s, so maybe some cloud cover there. 70s stretching all the way up into Montana, however. Doesn't look like it'll last into the first part of the work week, so we get a nice warm weekend here. And then as Monday rolls in, so do the clouds, the rain, and believe it or not, more snow. 30s expected through the Colorado Rockies, and they're likely to see a little bit of snow. And in the northern plains, some of the same spots that have had snow yesterday and today. Uh, looks like round two coming up on Tuesday. While in the south, we see a nice warm up once again ahead of the next storm system that will cool things off. Uh, briefly, but probably not for too long. Here's how it looks on Sunday. Our storm system now well off to the north and east, but some backlash snow showers that may be a little blustery. The next one coming in brings rain and snow showers to the Pacific Northwest. Windy conditions in the Great Basin and through the Rockies. It quickly moves on out into the plains. Rain and snow here. Some stronger thunderstorms Monday and Tuesday. And it looks like this one may just hold together and produce severe thunderstorms right up through Wednesday. This is the Weather Channel, weather you can always turn to for accurate, dependable weather forecasts 24 hours a day. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Jill Brown and Dennis Smith with you this hour on the Weather Channel. And believe it or not, we're still talking snow at this late date. And not just snow flurries or rain and snow mix, but some heavy snow in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, especially where you see two feet now on the ground in Sawyer Air Force Base, and it continues to snow. Marquette, Michigan has had over a foot of snow. They're still getting some. And Sault Ste. Marie, four inches. Rochester, Minnesota, not so bad here, but still three inches of snow. And chilly temperatures at this time of year is no bargain. Take a look at the satellite picture. We will this into motion and we'll show you a little culprit here. An area of low pressure that's working its way through the Great Lakes up into Canada should be clearing out if not today, then we'll see the last few flakes of snow tomorrow and should be on the warming trend after that. However, it looks like down the road a piece, when we get to the forecast, we'll show you that there is a possibility of more snow. So the cold air rushing in behind the storm system. It's actually pretty cloudy through here. There's a few sprinkles of rain in Ohio and Indiana, and they stand a chance of seeing a little snow as well. While the sunshine is back out in Louisiana, they had some highs only in the 50s yesterday, and they should be getting back into the 70s. Nice day in Texas. And on the East Coast, one more more stormy day, and then it looks like it should start to dry out gradually over the weekend. But in the meantime, uh, temperatures are being held back by the clouds. 60 in New York City, not bad really. 71 in Raleigh, Durham, and 77 in Charleston. So we've had a few warm days, and it looks like now we're going to have a fairly cool weekend shaping up. As you can see, the cold air uh, really coming in. St. Louis, 40 degrees, and they've had some snow with a little bit of rain around. Temperatures in the 60s and 70s in Texas, so they're rebounding pretty nicely through here. Southwest. Let's take a look at Phoenix. It's already 81 degrees. No problems there. Looks like most of the wet weather should be to your north. For the moment, however, we're going to focus most of our attention along this cold front where severe weather has been occurring earlier today right along the cold front in western parts of Pennsylvania. They had numerous reports of damage, mainly wind damage with wind gusts up over 60 miles per hour. Actually, a report of a port swing going right through a window. So, had some pretty strong winds with this. And then down into North Carolina, a couple uh, storm reports from there. 
there, and we still have a watch for the possibility of tornadoes. This is the entire area with the risk of severe weather. Here's our watch area then in parts of Maryland as well as Virginia. Tornado watch until 7 o'clock this evening. So it could be several more hours of stormy weather all through here. We may have more watches come out, so we'll keep a close eye on it. Here's the radar showing you that the rain has now made it to the coast. Cape Hatteras, Elizabeth City, up to Virginia Beach, Salisbury, and Washington, D.C. A few thunderstorms in there. We haven't had a lot of reports of severe weather in the past couple of hours, but certainly some heavy rain and the, one of the major threats today is going to be flooding once again. The rivers are running high and the ground is pretty saturated through much of the east, especially in the northeast, and this rain is going to quickly cause some problems. Rain up to Wilkes-Barre and up towards Binghamton. They've had a few thunderstorms today. Syracuse rain, at least I guess we can say it's warm enough so that it is all rain this go around. But uh, no, not so. If you go a little further to the west, Wisconsin, Michigan, into Illinois, they're getting some snow. And as I mentioned, down to St. Louis. So some lighter precipitation through here in the low clouds. I'll keep it rather cool. They had temperatures in the mid-70s in Cleveland yesterday. As we get to the weekend, you may be right back in the 30s with the possibility of a little snow to start off your Saturday. It doesn't look so great. We will get rid of this storm system. The next one coming along, very weak. We've had reports of a couple of flakes of snow here and there in Colorado. So we'll watch this one come through, mainly with some clouds. The bigger storm waiting off the coast of the Pacific Northwest, and it looks like that one will swing in. You can see the wound up low here in the Gulf of Alaska, that coming up into Canada. The clouds are already in. So far, really just one report of rain around Kuliu, but much more rain expected with this one. This may take several more hours. So later this afternoon, we'll look for that. And you can see the front should be swinging in. At least uh, by Saturday morning, the rain coming in, probably snow in the higher elevations. Our first storm system just about gone at this point, so that's some good news. Two major storm systems, this one in the northeast moving out, and this one in the west coast, on the west coast bringing in the heavier rain. The one in between, I wouldn't cancel your outdoor plans, but you might keep an eye to the sky, perhaps around Little Rock and up towards St. Louis for some passing showers and maybe a couple of isolated thunderstorms. Should be pretty piddly stuff here with the heaviest precipitation along the west coast, a half inch possible. One once the rain comes in, and the rain has already begun here, and it would not be surprising to see many locations get an inch radar or more of rain, and they've already seen up to two inches in parts of Pennsylvania today, so it's certainly not out of the question. Here we are in Wisconsin and Michigan. More snow expected, several more inches. Lighter snow back through Colorado, where temperatures will drop into the 20s, and we'll see some 20s in the Cascades, and they'll get some snow as well. Temperatures on Saturday only in the 40s. However, you see a nice streak of 70s here. The cool pocket doesn't look like it will last too long. We'll be a little chilly as we move into Saturday morning, but by the weekend, uh, the rest of the end of the weekend, the first part of the work week looks pretty good. Let's check it out. Our weekend outlook is sponsored by Wheaton Worldwide Moving, a moving America from sea to shining sea. Alrighty, back on Saturday now again. A lot of 70s out here. The southeast sunny and cool for this time of year, but a little bit better Saturday than it is today. And then by Sunday, we should start to see temperatures on the rise. Certainly that is the case in Texas. A lot of 80s there. Southwest should see some 90s. We start to see a little bit of a cooling trend here on Sunday. And by Monday, the cool air really rushes in with that next storm system that should drop temperatures into the 30s again in Colorado, at least in the higher elevations. I believe that looks like it may bring in more snow. Snow exiting along with some rain in the northeast. Here there's a few passing showers on Saturday. That should fizzle out pretty quickly. Anywhere from St. Simons Island down to St. Augustine, there may be a few showers on Sunday. And then we'll watch this system. It comes in Sunday and really gains some strength Monday and into Tuesday. And once again, we're likely to be talking about severe weather on the Gulf Coast and the lower Mississippi Valley and more snow in the forecast. There, first off the satellite picture, you can see a lot of cloud cover coming in. Uh, no surprise they've had rain reported in Dublin and Shannon and on over to London as well. Nice day, however, in Paris. Looks like they may have more clouds by tomorrow. And they had sunshine by the cool weather down in Madrid, though, afternoon high of 60 degrees. Let's go ahead and check out the current temperatures. Now it's late evening, so temperatures are dropping back, and it's 54 in Paris. Still 72, however. Now Seville, Madrid, not reporting this hour. Take a look at Moscow. The high today was 41 degrees with clear skies, setting up for a very cold night. And the forecast then for midday Saturday, same front, bringing some rain from Scandinavia to southern British Isles. High pressure over the Iberian Peninsula, although they still are going to have relatively cool weather for this time of year. Only 50s and 60s and a lot of 40s to the far north. Check the weather for.
At the east stand, we've had numerous reports of flooding, and flash flood watches are out for all of these areas shaded in dark green. The latest flood warning coming out of Lancaster County in Pennsylvania, reporting that some cars are stranded due to the high water, and it's an urban and small stream flood warning. So a lot of flooding through this area. The rain should continue through much of the day, and it'll be scattered, scattered lighter rains back into Michigan, Ohio, and Illinois, and there's a little snow in here as well. Meanwhile, in the northwest, so far, Quileute right on the coast in Washington, reporting a little bit of rain. Much more rain expects to come in later in the day and some of that may be heavy and there is a possibility that we could see some flooding in Oregon as well with this one. No severe thunderstorms expected there but that's certainly a possibility again today in this area shaded in dark red and there is a tornado watch in effect until 7 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, parts of Maryland and Virginia and it would certainly be likely that we'll see more watches and warnings for this area through this evening. Calming down over the weekend so hang in there but we may stick with some snow. We already have two feet on the ground so it could be some, some, some slip driving conditions through Wisconsin and Michigan. Our sunshine today, but that did help boost temperatures up above the yearly standard, or the, the standard for the date that is, which is 61 degrees. Take a look at our almanac page. We got up to 63 today, so we can't really complain. No precipitation as of yet. We've been waiting for it, and this whole pressure works up to the north and areas just off to our west. All right, here are the regional observations, 57 in West Hampton, 61 ice slope, a lot of clouds around. If you're seeing any sunshine, count yourself pretty lucky and don't expect it to last. Unfortunately, it looks like a lot of heavy rain just off to our west and that should be coming in. So cloudy skies will turn to showers and even thunderstorms and there is a flash flood watch out. The rivers and streams are running fairly high. Most of the ground and surrounding areas is pretty saturated, so rain can pretty quickly cause some problems. Take a look at the satellite picture of the eastern U.S. It's one big storm system, air low pressure working through the Great Lakes and up into Canada. On the back side of it, they're getting snow, so I guess uh, that's one thing we won't have to worry about. They actually have as much as two feet of snow on the ground on the upper peninsula of Michigan, snow all the way down into Illinois, and even St. Louis has seen some snow today. And the low clouds and drizzle are hanging in through the Ohio and Tennessee valleys, but most of the heavier action right along and ahead of the cold front on the east coast. You can see the puffy clouds here. Thunderstorms are anywhere from around Cape Hatteras up through Washington, D.C. to Philadelphia and just to the west of New York City. And the radar will show us exactly where the rain is at the moment. Heavy rain reported this past hour on Allentown and it's now moving very slowly to the east at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. So it may just take a while longer before we start to see the heavier rain and the thunderstorms, but it does look like some stormy weather for a time clearing out over the weekend. Let's check it out. Here's where the front sits, still back in Pennsylvania. Most of the heavy rain right along and ahead of it. Very slow to move off to the east and out of the picture, but it does look like by tomorrow afternoon, just a few leftover snow, rain showers in northern New England. Maybe a little blustery and cool here, but we should start to see some sunshine once again after a few showers and thunderstorm sunshine today. Well, it does look like stormy weather is going to definitely be on the increase this or on the decrease this weekend. So that's some good news. However, in the northeast for Saturday, it'll still be very windy. South winds at some 20 to 25 miles per hour uh, along the coast of Maine, and then the north to northwest winds uh, around our area of low pressure here. So it's still very windy, and we're likely to still have a few thunderstorms, especially in northern New England. Wind should start to clear in southern New England at least later in the day. So hang out for some sunshine if you can. The sky's clearing back across Ohio, and uh, looks like the snow tapering off pretty quickly here, although you may wake up to a couple flakes around Detroit or even Cleveland. Further to the south, sunshine back in the picture. Temperatures will be a little cool this weekend, but not bad, and winds should be dying down, so generally about 5 to 15 mile per hour winds expected. On the west coast, a new storm system pulling in late today and tomorrow. That will bring with it some stronger winds, gusts over 25 miles per hour expected in the red zone here. And along with that, you also have a lot of clouds and there's some fairly heavy rain expected with sunshine further to the south. Showers. As we check the weather for the next five days, we'll see one big storm system finally on the way out. Things should quiet down through the weekend, but a new storm coming into the west coast. Here's how it shapes up. Saturday morning, there goes our storm system. Still some wraparound snow showers. Marquette may still be picking up a little light snow tomorrow morning. Detroit may get some snow, and you may even see some flurries around Cleveland or Akron. Not what you want to see in April, that's for sure. The thunderstorms are probably still rumbling along in Maine, at least the first part of the day, and then gradually clearing skies, we think, in the northeast. South down into uh, sunshine at this point. However, temperatures should be fairly cool through the weekend, with the exception of Florida. You get that far south, and you're certainly going to find some warmth. This system coming through will bring with it the threat of a couple of showers, maybe a few after and thunderstorms, but this really no big deal. Focus on this one, however, on the west coast. That one barrels in late today. The rain may be heavy at times. There could be some minor flooding problems, and then this one should really hold together and make its way all the way across the country. So this will be the next one we'll have to be watching for with the possibility 
of more severe storms. And yes, it looks like even more snow with this one. So we'll take it day by day. Let's first off take a look at temperatures. And we'll show you that it will be very chilly tomorrow morning in the snow zone. 20 degree temperatures, we think, in places like Green Bay and Sawyer Air Force Base, where they now have about two feet of snow on the ground and it's still snowing. 30s all the way to the Gulf Course, to the Gulf Course, <laughs> to the Gulf Coast. Doesn't look like Gulf Course weather, but by afternoon, actually, shouldn't be too bad. 60s and 70s in here. A few areas with some 50s. A cloud cover may hold temperatures back a little bit. But the 70s shoot all the way up into Montana. Southwest, no problems. They should stay with the sunshine all weekend long. The temperatures here will be warm. We do see a nice bulge of warmer weather in the center of the country through Sunday. But by Monday, the next system coming in. And that drops them right back from the 60s into the 40s. And even some 30s showing up in the higher elevations of Colorado. And at this point, you're likely to see more snow. Snow then spreading into the northern plains. Rain, of course, further to the south. And out ahead of the system, as the south winds kick in once again, you'll see a nice warm-up in temperatures. A lot of 70s and 80s coming back into the picture. There's our storm system, at least what's left of it on Sunday. Maybe a few flakes of snow, maybe a few showers to the south. Then watch this one. It comes in pretty quietly on Sunday. Light rain and some snow, some stronger winds. But by Monday, as it swings down into the southern plains, of it, snow back behind it. it. Looks like this one once again will be a slow mover, producing probably day after day of strong thunderstorms and a little more snow. Out of it. As we head into the weekend, thunderstorms spread across the northeast. Watch out for heavy showers and possible flooding. Stay with the Weather Channel for the latest development on stormy weather. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Jill Brown and Dennis Smith still talking about snow here in mid-April. Can't seem to escape it. Two feet of snow, no less, in Sawyer, uh, Sawyer Air Force Base in Michigan, Marquette. 16 inches reported with this storm. It's still snowing in some of these areas. As a matter of fact, just a few hours ago, it was heavy snow, maybe gradually tapering off at this point, and I think everyone would be happy to see that happen. Even down to Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Three inches on the ground. Places like Chicago, Cleveland, Detroit, you may see at least a few flakes of snow before this storm system moves out. There it is on the map. You can see Upper Peninsula of Michigan down to Wisconsin. A little bit of a rain and snow mixed down to Iowa. And St. Louis has seen a little rain and snow today. It looks like mainly rain at the present time. And then some low clouds and just a few showers. Back into Ohio and Indiana and certainly a chilly day underneath all this cloud cover. So let's get it with one area of low pressure now moving up into Canada. The trailing cold front out ahead of it is producing some big thunderstorms. The last few days we've had severe weather. It has cleared out in some of those areas that have to have had the severe weather and the heavy downpours and the damage due to wind, hail, and even tornadoes. So most of uh, the deep south enjoying some sunshine and they should have a pretty nice weekend setting up. And most of the low clouds here will even clear out. So looking a little better by tomorrow, we're going to get rid of a lot of the heavy thunderstorms as well. Out ahead of the system, we've had very warm weather. Yesterday, Washington, D.C. and Baltimore both hit 70 degrees for the first time this season. Not as warm today. It's not bad in Raleigh, Durham, 74, Charleston, 76, and Burlington, Vermont ended up with a couple peaks of sunshine, so that zipped them right up to the 70 degree mark. Meanwhile, on the back side of the system, where it's snowing, as you might expect, it's right around the freezing point. Just a little above Green Bay, 33 degrees. Chicago was 36, and wind chills have been in the low 20s all day. So there's actually a pretty stiff northwest wind with this one as well. Not a real pleasant day. The cool air has transferred all the way down into Texas, although they're rebounding today. A little cooler yesterday, and Louisiana was pretty chilly yesterday as well. So warming up somewhat here. It'll stay rather cool in the southeast through the weekend. Southwest. No changes. 85 right now in Phoenix, 72 in Burbank, and 79 in Las Vegas. You can expect basically more the same through the weekend. All right, let's hone in a little bit on our cold front here in western Pennsylvania, central Virginia, and North Carolina. Out ahead of it, we have a large band of thunderstorms. We may have another line of storms developing right with the cold front, and we do have the threat, of course, of severe weather. We've already had some earlier today in western Pennsylvania. It was mainly wind damage. Wind gusts over 60 miles per hour, damaged roofs, numerous trees reported down in this area, also in Virginia, and they have some or more of rain. And it's just marvelous. We have a lot of still pictures, but they don't giggle, they don't move, they don't wink, they don't smile. Uh, that's what a camcorder is for. And if you are expecting a new little one, or if you've just had it uh, with not having the fun that video can offer, we have a good offer for you today. And this is from Sharp, too, and they make great equipment. This is the 8 to 1 zoom lens camera. It's going to be included with or included with it would be a full function VCR including tracking and editing because it has a flying erase head. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Also included a two hour battery, 
All the cabling you need to hook this into your television as a full function VCR, or if you're going to be using your TV as a monitor, plus one of the finest cases ever. Uh, this is a beauty. It's uh, a very lightweight, uh, nylon 50 cent retail value. But you can have it for only $7.99 today, and uh, shipping handling of $11.72 is all you'll pay. We'll put uh, we'll throw in whatever the Federal Express charges are, so you'll have it in only two to three working days. So if you have something coming up that you want to take video of, you have the camera right here in two to three working days if you order it now. E4519. This is uh, an easy camera to use, too. Uh, a lot of folks have hesitated just saying they're too complicated. And though you see a lot of things down here that may look complicated, this is not a complicated camera because it has a full auto setting. If you put it on full auto, right up in here, that light will light up and the camera literally shoots itself. All you have to do is really aim it. And that includes focus, that includes white balance so that the colors are true, and that includes light levels, exposures. Now this is a low light camcorder, 3 lux. And if you're unfamiliar with that, uh, think uh, volts. You know what 110 volts is, it's electricity. It's an amount of electricity. A lux is an amount of light. One lux is the amount of light that one candle gives off if you're one meter away from it. So this camera can take light in as little as 